Hey guys, welcome back. So today is going to be the last video that I film in this room. I'm moving in a couple of days, um, so there won't be a video for another three weeks. And I think I might start doing them every three weeks, them rather every two weeks, just to give me a little bit more time to make sure that they are spot on, polished and uh, really informative for you guys. This week's video is going to be on uh, how to do those kind of vocal chops which have become so popular in electronic music. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So this tutorial will show you how you can get the simple vocal chop that you hear in a lot of music at the moment and then the effects that you can add to give it some extra character. I'm going to first start with this vocal sample. Having it long and stretched out rather than something short will help us get the effect that we want. So the main effect we'll need is gates which will allow us to control how much of the sample gets played. As you can hear, the gate effect allows us to set the volume a sound needs to be to be let through. However, for this video, we'll be relying on its sidechain feature. Using this will allow us to create an operator MIDI, which we can use to trigger the gate effect. So let's load operator. We don't need to do anything fancy, just make the filter envelope plucky by lowering the sustain to zero and decreasing the decay. Now let's write in a MIDI pattern for where we want our sample to be let through by the gate. I usually just program something in at random and I'll tweak it later to my liking. Now let's go back to the gate, click this arrow icon and now turn on the sidechain effect. Select the operator channel as the audio from input and voila, the sample plays when the MIDI notes play. Make sure the threshold isn't too high to stop the sample getting through. One cool thing about using operators to trigger the gate is that playing with the release allows us to change how long the gate stays open for. Now for some of the effects that I found work well on vocal chops. First the echo preset, a bit tipsy. It's got a nice amount of reverb and it adds a little bit of wonkiness to the sound. Next is sending the vocal to repetitor return. I'll automate it to peak at a certain point to add some cool extra repeats and echoes. I can also add a quick shaper to modulate the filter on the echo to progressively add more low end to the echo over the two bars I've set it for. Next I'll also add some echo to see if I can push this even more. I often find I get the best results from effects when I'm just re-experimenting to see if they sound good. I'll use the shaper to also modulate the dry wet of this new echo so that it's highest when the earlier echo is being filtered the most. So as the first echo lets more through, the second echo is less active and vice versa. One final thing you can do is add an auto filter set to band pass, an effect I love for adding rhythmic fill to your sounds. Here I set the rate to 2 and the amount to around 13 and adjust the frequency so it's sweeping over the vocal. At this point it's sounding very far from the original, so you don't have to take it quite as far as me. And that's how you get your vocals and some additional wacky effects you can add to put on top. And that's put it in a track. So that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed, learned something from that, and maybe take some of these techniques into your own tracks. Vocal chops are a really interesting way to add just a little extra to your tracks, make them stand out a little bit more. Um, as I always say, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe because it really helps the channel grow and I'll catch you in the next one.